Each year, scientists, researchers, and everyday people make incredible discoveries, helping us to better understand the world around us. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at interesting discoveries. New bacteria species thrives after volcanic eruption. A new life form was discovered, and it's being called Venus's hair. What makes it so unique is an ability to thrive after a toxic underwater eruption. The name comes from the being's appearance of thread-like bacterias that resemble hair. Its discovery means a great deal to scientists because of its ability to recover after a destructive eruption that happened underwater. An underwater volcanic explosion is very similar to what is experienced on land. The eruptions produce lava and toxic gases that destroy all the life within its vicinity. One example of this is an explosion that happened in 2011 by the Togoro submarine volcano. The volcano is located off the coast of the Canary Islands and wiped out all the animals and plants in close range of its eruption. It led to an increase in the water's temperature and released massive amounts of carbon dioxide. Fish and plants were unable to survive within the newly established and poisonous area. However, when scientists returned years later, they discovered these thick mats of hair-like bacteria. It was discovered that the bacteria can survive in sulfur-rich environments that are created when volcanic eruptions take place. Venus's hair does not require food to survive, but gathers energy through oxygen and some forms of nitrogen. The species may act as the starting point for recovery of the area's recovery and attract fish that feed off them. Scientists are curious to continue researching these bacteria and learning more about how they can help the oceanic ecosystem to recover after natural disasters. Could a volcano be waking up on the outskirts of Rome? Italy may be the land of wine and delicious pasta, but looming over its head are perhaps the most dangerous volcanoes to exist on Earth. One of them being Vesuvius, which is around the Bay of Naples, the other being Etna which is not as active but has explosions capable of affecting air travel. A volcano named Colli Albany, or the Alban Hills, has been around for a long time, but not active in recent periods. It borders closer to Rome and could pose a major threat if it decides to wake up. A team of scientists recently studied the volcano and suggested that regional stress changes in that part of Italy could cause Colli Albany to become active once again. Research has shown that volcanic systems tend to regularly reactivate on timescales of 31 to 36,000 years. Colli Albany currently sits between this time period since its last eruption. However, it may be 5,000 plus years before any activity could begin to happen, and Rome has only seen small explosive eruptions of late that may have some effect on people living directly surrounding the volcano, but not the larger city. If a larger eruption was to take place, it could have more detrimental effects for the capital city. That being said, it's likely Rome will not need to worry about it waking up anytime soon. What is causing volcanoes to collapse? Scientists are believed to have finally figured out what causes large-scale volcanic eruptions and the conditions that may lead to them happening. A volcano called Kalawi in Hawaii is one of the most active volcanoes to exist in the world today. It's also the most highly equipped with monitoring systems and instruments used to measure and record everything and anything that happens with it. A recent eruption in 2018 was one of the largest to happen and caused a summit to collapse. With the data recorded by this eruption, scientists were able to learn a bit more about what mechanisms might be triggering them. They concluded that the causal factor in the eruptions being so large compared to usual is the collapse of the volcano's caldera, which is the crater-like depression at its summit. What happens is a large piece of rock falls from the caldera and gets stuck in the volcano's walls, which ends up squeezing out more magma than what would normally be expelled. What really piqued scientists' curiosity was how these rocks were breaking off and falling into the volcano. They determined that the likely culprit was vents located farther away from the volcano and at a lower elevation. 
It's eruptions in these lower down vents that cause a collapse of the caldera and ultimately a larger eruption. The benefit of learning this new important fact about how larger eruptions seem to take place means that experts can watch out for any smaller eruptions taking place in the volcano's vents. If a smaller eruption takes place, it will be considered a major warning that a larger one may be coming next. Fortunately, active volcanoes like Kalawi in Hawaii are heavily monitored and researchers should easily be able to determine if a smaller eruption takes place. Medieval Italian man replaced his amputated hand with a knife. Prosthetics are one element of life that has undoubtedly benefited from improvements in technology through the years. In fact, archaeologists recently uncovered remains that appear to be a man who replaced his amputated hand with nothing other than a knife. The man was found buried in a northern Italian Longobard necropolis that seems to date back between the 6th and 8th centuries CE and contains hundreds of fascinating human and animal skeletons. Upon initial study of the remains, the grave in question appears to be an older man, especially for the time, who was between 40 and 50 years old. His arm had been amputated at the forearm by blunt force trauma, but researchers were unable to determine whether this amputation was intentional or was the result of an accident or battle wound, especially considering the warrior tendencies of the Longobard people. Regardless, such an amputation when combined with the presence of what was believed to be a knife as a prosthesis is an incredibly rare archaeological find, and the team of archaeologists promptly began by intensive study of the circumstances of the grave and the man within, releasing their findings in a report published in the Journal of Anthropological Sciences. The main focus of the study was to determine whether or not the knife which was found placed across the man's chest with the butt aligned with the end of his amputated wrist, was truly being used as a prosthetic device, and compelling evidence points to the fact that it was. For starters, the remains of a buckle and decomposed leather at the amputation site suggests that the knife was originally attached to the arm. The end of the amputated arm also displayed changes such as the development of a callus and bone spur, which are consistent with the types of pressure that would have been applied with a prosthesis. His body also portrayed telltale signs of extended prosthetic wear, such as extensive degradation of the teeth on the right side and an unnatural C-shaped bone ridge on the shoulder, both of which likely would have developed as a result of years of tightening leather straps using his teeth and opposite arm. Given the warrior nature of the society in which the man lived, it seems only natural that he would have chosen to strap a knife to the place where his hand would have been. Due to the presence of advanced bone healing at the amputation site, archaeologists know that he lived for many years after his injury, which can tell us a lot about the type of people the ancient Longobards were. According to the paper, this man is fascinating because he shows a remarkable survival after a forelimb amputation during the pre-antibiotic era. Not only did he adjust very well to his condition, but he also did so with the use of a culturally derived device, along with considerable community support. The survival of this Longobard male testifies to community care, family compassion, and a high value given to human life. Studies like this one of ordinary men in a community who might have lived under extraordinary circumstances can tell researchers much about the inner workings of their society and are valuable sources of information about the past. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.